So my dream as an eight-year-old was that I would sail the oceans and drop into all of the islands. Hilarious. I'm pleased that I had this kind of childhood and I'm pleased that I lived when I've lived because I think I've had the best of many things opportunities and you know the beginning of the my career started at the beginning of the sort of feminist movement when you know really um, things were su more supportive of women I've, I've really enjoyed that this era that I've been in um, and observed all the changes and the dramatic changes in our society which have been very important in the kinds of work that I've done I wanted to be the perinatal epidemiologist the maternal and child epidemiologist of Australia. So that was my agenda. One of the first big studies we did, because we thought it was the most important question to address, was why there was such variability in neural tube defects, spina bifida and encephaly, encephalocele, horrible defects. Epidemiologists love things that go up and down because if it's going up, it can come down. And what are the factors? Well, one of the factors that looked really promising was maternal diet. So we did this very good case control study. Carol Bauer was leading it. Well, she was doing her PhD. I said to her, this is going to be your PhD. And she then did this for her PhD. So that really was fantastic. And what Carol did with, with, it, with my team was we set up the first, the world's first primary prevention program for neural tube defects in Western Australia. And we found this incredible association of maternal diet in the three months leading up to the you know, first trimester um, of, of protection if you had a diet that was rich in folic acid, which is a, a B vitamin. Well, it was stunning results. So people don't even sort of think about it now. Everyone takes folate if they want to get pregnant. You know, how exciting in this, you know, very, it's very unusual to get a primary prevention for a birth defect. So exciting, and that's why alcohol is important, and fetal alcohol syndrome is so important. That's the, the big defects that we're working on now. And it took us again years to get a little label on a wine bottle with a pregnant lady, a red pregnant lady with a, with a cross through her, because it was a red and it was going to be difficult to print the labels. Give me a break. Most countries now have, have labelling on bottles to, to encourage women to not drink in the pregnancy. Right? And the other thing that I, I look back on and I'm still enjoying is the very large number of Aboriginal researchers that we have grown and who are now succeeding all over Australia, but you know, in lots of different places, and they are now leaders uh, in, in research. And that stemmed from a, a question I put to the Aboriginal controlled health organisations in Western Australia in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. And I said, look, you know, we're not a a service provider, we're a research institute. What do you want to be, you know, what do you want us to be for you? And they said, we want you to be our mother. And a mother gives to her child all the love and support and the knowledge and the funds and everything else so that that child can go out into a world which is pretty tough and cope. And so what we did was train all these Aboriginal researchers. Well, it's, it's been the most interesting and wonderful thing for me because I have got completely different perspective on what health is in Aboriginal communities and what love is and what respect is and it, it, it's just changed my life. So I, I have this wonderful friendships uh, with all these Aboriginal researchers and have got the ability therefore to use all of the research findings that we've had in all of the areas of research to advocate and lobby for things like Aboriginal control of services or you know the way that Aboriginal people do research and how different it is and when they lead it, of course, it works. That's been a very uh, rewarding experience for me, but also one that I think was very important uh, for Aboriginal health nationwide. I have to say that early on in my career, I didn't get a lot of mentoring, which is why I'm now so keen on mentoring young people myself. And it's much tougher now. I had a dream run with grants. I was asked to go on committees early on in my career because I needed a woman. Um, and so that was hugely beneficial to me because I found out how NHMRC worked and I found out how the ARC worked and I found out how government worked because I was on the Prime Minister's Science Council for years. 
And that was incredibly important because we could lobby, we could advocate and, and so on. I actually do group mentoring now with groups of young people and I think that's very beneficial and I would have appreciated more of that. Sometimes you felt very lonely as being a working mum, as being an institute director, um, you know, as a woman. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I often felt lonely. I had a fantastically supportive husband who half the good ideas in the institute were his ideas. He was just very supportive. I know, maybe I, maybe I was Italian in a previous life. <laughs> but no, I get so enthusiastic. You, you somehow you need your hands to explain things. Not that there's graphs and things, but sometimes I do that. But um, yes, yeah, so she did capture that and capture that sort of, I guess, enthusiasm for things. Um, the other thing is that I always wore a, um, a reconciliation badge. Um, and that was a very obvious one. It was had an Aboriginal designs on it. And even at every single minister's meeting or the science meetings or anything else, I wore that. I wore it when I was made Australian of the Year, um, so that it was a statement. And, you know, that was very Im important for me. Um, but she captured that too. That's, it, that is very obvious on the red jacket, I think, um, in the portrait. Mm. From Perth, from little old Perth, just shows you, you can do it. You just, and, and it's a great place to do research because of the databases and because of the contained population and because of telethon. Because of telethon, everyone knows about our research. Everyone knew who I was. It was fantastic.